Baltimore City Council Ways and Means Committee. Uh, we're back for fiscal year 2022 uh, budget hearings, uh, uh, specifically uh, City Council Ordinance 21-0080, Ordinance of Estimates for the fiscal year ending uh, June 30, 2022. Um, uh, Eric Costello, Councilman from the 11th District and Chair of the Committee. I'm joined in chambers by a uh, vice chair for, for the afternoon, uh, Councilman Robert Stokes from the 12th District, uh, member of the committee as well. Uh, also joining us virtually, uh, Council member, Councilman Chris Burnett, 8th District member of the committee, Councilman Ryan Dorsey, 3rd uh, District member of the committee, Councilman Isaac Yitzi Schleifer, 5th District member of the committee, Council President Nick Mosby, Council Vice President uh, Sharon Milton, 6th District member of the committee, uh, Councilman Mark Conway, 4th District, Councilwoman Felicia Porter, uh, seventh district. Uh, in addition, uh, we have, uh, I know we have Mara James from Bureau of Budget and Management Research uh, and, and popping on shortly, uh, representing Mayor Brandon Scott will be uh, Natasha Mehu and Nina Themelis. Uh, representing Council President Nick Mosby, uh, popping on shortly will be uh, Matt Stegman and Nikki Thompson. Uh, we are here for the Board of Liquor License Commissioners, BLLC, uh, better known as the Liquor Board. In Chambers, we have the um, Deputy uh, Executive Secretary, uh, uh, Nick Blendy. Uh, on virtually, uh, we have the Executive Secretary, uh, Doug Page. I'm going to turn it over to them in a second. Um, I've got another uh, uh, meeting to jump to, uh, but I just want to make a, a brief comment um, about the Liquor Board. Uh, about Doug Page, about Nick Blendy, um, and and the job that that they've done under the leadership of the commissioners, uh, the liquor board uh, around uh, 2014 uh, was a very sorry example of what government should do. There was an audit conducted by uh, the state's office of legislative audits. Uh, there were 18 material findings. Um, under, under Doug's leadership, uh, this agency has completely transformed. I believe 17 of, of those 18 material findings uh, were completely addressed to OLA's satisfaction uh, before the uh, subsequent triennial audit, I wanna say in 2017. I'm sure Doug will, or Nick will get me on if I got the year right later, um, but they have truly transformed uh, the way that this department functions. This is one of the only agencies in city government uh, that brings in revenue uh, and is uh, net neutral or, or positive. I think I got that correct, Mara. Um, the, the level of community outreach that they have done uh, with, with Matt and his team uh, has been phenomenal. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not thank uh, John Kersamalis, my good friend, John, uh, who is the chief inspector uh, who is doing uh, just absolutely incredible work. Uh, his inspectors are, are doing a phenomenal job. Uh, so Doug and Nick, and I also want to thank Tom Akris, who was, who was Doug's uh, deputy uh, for a number of years uh, and played a major role in this transformation. So again, uh, Doug and Nick, I, I want to say thank you. I appreciate the responsiveness. I appreciate the great work. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, and I'll take this liberty as chair, of this committee to say this publicly. Uh, this is one of the three highest functioning agencies in Baltimore city government. And if wow. we could have more agencies operate in the way that uh, the liquor board does, uh, we would be in a far better place. This agency is an example for how to get things done, how to get them done efficiently and how to get them done efficiently in the right way. So Doug, Nick, I wanna thank you. Um, at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Councilman Stokes, uh, who's gonna be chairing this portion of, of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Um, I just you. want to real quick um, thank Nick and, and Doug and the, for taking the liquor board in a different direction that the community always wanted to see it go. And, and it's, it's wonderful. I just hear great things about the liquor board now. So kudos go to both of y'all and your staff because you really didn't take him change the leadership and looking at it a different lens here in Baltimore. And, a lot of community people I talk to, they're really happy with direction and where the uh, liquor board is. Um, Nick, I don't know if you want to do a presentation real quick. Okay. First, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you um, for, for having us here today. And I'd like to let uh, the executive secretary um, make some introductory remarks, if that's all right with you. 
yes. But thank you, Nick. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can, can you hear me? We were having some technical difficulties a few minutes ago, uh, and I would like to thank the honorable chair of the committee for his uh, uh, comments a few minutes ago, and the uh, vice chair. Um, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman and the honorable committee and staff. Uh, I am Douglas Page, executive secretary of the Baltimore City Liquor Board. And on behalf of my chairman, Albert Matriciani, Commissioners Aaron Greenfield, Robert Guy, and Harvey Jones, we'd like to thank you for this opportunity uh, that we have today to present and review uh, before this honorable committee, the BLC's budget. Um, my team with me today, as you just stated, Nick Blendy, who needs no introduction, um, very familiar with the chambers and many of the members, if not all of the members, uh, Nick serves as a Deputy Executive Secretary, uh, wears a lot of hats around here, as well as uh, the agency's accountant, Masai Benyene. Uh, we look forward to giving you a robust presentation and here to answer any and all questions uh, regarding the operations of the uh, uh, BILC. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair and uh, Mr. Blindy. Thank you, Mr. Executive Secretary. Um, again, for the record, my name is Nicholas Blendy, the Deputy Executive Secretary of uh, the BLLC. Uh, happy to be here in chambers with you. Uh, good to see familiar faces. Um, I guess I'll jump right into the uh, the presentation. If I, if I can do it right. Let's see. Got to go into slideshow. Nick, can you um, uh, how long is your um, presentation? Pretty quick. We have okay. two, uh, two, two, uh, two service numbers, two items, and I can blow through this real fast. If uh, thank you. And not, you know, I see some all bon pan that, that this. Probably, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's important. <laughs> uh, um, so we have, and Mara will correct me, I'm sure, if I say anything uh, wrong from budget perspective. <laughs> we have two service numbers, and they are primarily uh, one D deals with the more administrative functions, and the second one deals with the inspector functions. So the first one is uh, service number 850, the equitable neighborhood development. Um, this is the, the our, our folks who uh, process, issue, transfer, review the applications for renewal of all the city's alcoholic beverages and adult entertainment licenses. Um, we also collaborate uh, with community outreach and um, do our legislatively mandated work that um, the, the chairman mentioned earlier. Um, we, in a normal non-pandemic world, uh, attend meetings in person led primarily by Matt Ockhammer, our community liaison. Um, in the virtual world, Matt, I think, would say that he, he has attended a higher quantity of meetings by being able to jump off and on Zooms or WebExes or what have you, but probably the quality of, of the interaction, you know, something's missing. I think we're all looking forward to getting back into meeting in person, and we will continue to do that uh, now that, as we come out of the pandemic. So the recommended budget maintains the level of service. Um, and I just want to point out that um, as many agencies, I'm sure, have come in here and explained how they adapted to the COVID pandemic challenges, um, what we did, my predecessor, Tom, and, and myself since coming on, and Doug and all of our staff, uh, we were um, very uh, flexible with uh, great leadership from our, our chairman and commissioners in figuring out how to, how to help our licensees and the community uh, set and ex meet the expectations of the various executive orders from Governor Hogan and Mayor Scott and Mayor Young before that. Um, so we extended licenses uh, from 2020 and then those got renewed on December 31st, 2020. And now we have set a uh, universe back to normal as required by state law. Our license year runs from May 1st to April 30th of the following year. Um, because of the governor's order, we're, we're dragging out the process to help our, our licensees uh, have the resources and the time to, to get the applications in. And um, so, which is to say June 30th, all of the um, 
statutory or the executive order grace periods expire. So we will be able to give a full picture to this committee, to the mayor, to the public about what the toll of the pandemic was on our establishments. Prior to the pandemic, we had about 1,260 60 some odd licenses throughout the city. Right now, as of yesterday, uh, we had only received um, less than 1,100 renewal applications. Um, so we'll be continuing to do outreach and remind everybody that they need to renew, but come July, we'll be able to report to everyone um, who, who may be closed permanently as a result of the pandemic. So with that, I can just move into the next um, slide, which is our compliance uh, yeah. service. And yes, sir. Before you go any further, what was that information you said you're going to be presented to the uh, council? Oh. So, um, Ms. Karen can make sure we get that information. Sure. Uh, we, we will be able to give um, the council and the public and the mayor and uh, all, our, you know, all, all of everyone uh, a snapshot of how many licensees we had open and operating prior to the pandemic. And then sometime in July, we'll, we'll be able to, because the window closes on June 30th, we'll be able to do an accounting and let everyone know how many licensees actually renewed to operate in the 2021 2022. Um, so if it's 12, we'll be able to say 12, it looks like 12 establishments closed. Hopefully it's not going to be a, a, a massive number, but we don't know. And, you know, because the grace period goes till June, June 30th, but that's what we'll be happy to present to the council. Thank real quick, Nick, before you. Yes, sir. Presentation. Because of the B7 to A7 license changing, would you have a list, not a current list that you have, that shows what the um, liquor established went from the B7 to the A7? Can you also present, um, send that also? Thank yes, you. sir. Be happy to do so. And I know you've got a couple of more hearings, uh, I think maybe in two weeks, that we'll yes. be, be participating. You. Yes, sir. Happy to do that. So, with your permission, may I move to the next service item? Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, the second service number we have is our liquor license compliance division. Um, that is uh, primarily led by Chief Inspector Chris Amalis and our nine uh, additional um, agents and inspectors who regularly go out throughout the city and conduct a variety of inspections from routine to compliance to uh, participating in the social club task force and to, you know, responding to 311 generated um, complaints from the citizen. Um, again, so uh, I'll segue to say, you know, this was also um, presented some challenges due to the pandemic, right? Because how are you going to go and conduct a routine inspection if the mayor's executive order says everybody needs to be closed? So what our inspectors did was, of course, went out and made sure that folks were actually closed as required by mayor's executive orders during the pandemic. Fortunately, we seem to be in a place where we're coming out of that. We're back at 100% capacity. And so our inspectors have um, resumed uh, their normal, ordinary course of business of going around and making sure that you know folks have all the things that they're required to have by our rules and regulations and state law. And of course, responding um, to 311 complaints from members of the community and from various, you know, I know that your office and you specifically, obviously you get information from the community members and we're happy to, to reach out and inspect uh, whoever you, you guys point us to and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So, um, this is to say, in the pandemic, we also, uh, because of the challenges of, that we've seen with the US mail and other things and the, those delays, what our inspectors have done in order to continue to be you know, showing up for work every day and doing good work for the agency and for the community's expectations, they've actually been physically delivering these liquor licenses as part of their ordinary duties. Um, and then now that they're in the renewals, when they take these new licenses out to the establishments, then they're conducting their inspection to make sure, you know, the appropriate health certificates are up and, and you know, everything is in compliance with all state and local law. So we're very excited to be getting back to, to ordinary uh, way of life. And uh, then the last thing um, that I want to point out from the budget item there is an increase in $107,800 in funding, and it's for a new cloud-based software contract. Um, so what one thing we've learned, um, you know, folks cannot come into to the building because it's not safe due to the, the pandemic situation. So um, what we've been dealing with is, you know, a very uh, lengthy amount of time 
you know, reviewing and, and processing applications. And we're very excited as we move forward um, with this contract, which we, it's currently a, a CARES money funded contract, but now BBMR and the mayor have put the money in for, for us to, you know, keep a recurring general fund item, but we're very excited that we'll be able to uh, have some point in fiscal year 22 uh, folks applying online for licenses, applying online for their renewals. Uh, our inspectors will be able to uh, input um, their findings from inspections into the database. And so we'll be able to have a very good uh, dashboard out there so that the members of the public and the council and everybody can see, um, you know, where's the 311 calls coming from, who has been violating underage sales to minors, you know, those types of things. And, and very transparent and very um, much in keeping with all the great work that um, Executive Secretary Page and my predecessor, Deputy Executive uh, Secretary Acris, have been doing to, to get us in compliance and to make us the agency that the chairman said such kind things about. So uh, I can go through any any more specifics that you wish to discuss, Mr. Chairman, or I can shut up and be quiet so you can get to the, the, the all bomb hot. <laughs> Just want to mention one thing. Uh, Doug, is your head gray? Because I worry, Doug. Oh, I, I can't. <laughs> That was one of his hair was great for me calling him so much. So he's dead. I guess he's dying his hair now. So I don't know. <laughs> um, um, Council President, you have any comments or questions? I don't know if he's still. That's President. Okay, we'll come back. Uh, Councilman Burnett, go on. You have any questions or concerns? Okay, this is pretty good. I don't at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, one moment. Councilman Yitzi, if you're on, you have any questions or concerns? No, thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Uh, Councilwoman Sh Sharon Middleton, or oh, Chairwoman, I'm sorry. Did I get that right? Okay. So it was a little technical. So, hello there. Sorry, I'm having a little difficulty here. But um, no question, but just want to uh, thank the Liquor Board for um, continuing to work with our communities, especially our impo impoverished community. I was so happy to be a part of Transform Baltimore, and I know the Liquor Board was extremely um, cooperative and worked with us and the communities through Transform Baltimore. And that's part of the reason that you are, I know, successful today. Um, thankful that Park Heights took the lead in like um, changing hours to help accommodate and um, work with the communities on um, eradicating some of the issues surrounded surrounding liquor stores and um, your liaisons have been just um, phenomenal in supporting community associations and attend attending their meetings just to keep, so you can stay up to date on some of the issues. So you have a streamlined process that um, I know I'm so proud of that um, really, um, again, irons out those kinks and keeping those um, renewing and re-energizing those partnerships of, you know, with liquor store owners. So every, it has taken just a new phenomenon today. And um, I, I thank you so much for, for your leadership and your team. Thank you, That's Madam it. Chair. Um, thank you, Madam. Uh -huh. right. Councilman Dorsey, if you're on, you have any concerns or questions? I'm here, Mr. Chair, but I have none. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Porter, concerns or questions for the legal board? Okay. Councilwoman Porter, Councilwoman Porter so let's move on. Uh, we went to Council Burnett. Uh, Council President Mosby, are you on if you have any concerns or questions? Okay, this is, I like these kind of hearings. You know? Well, I guess that concludes the, the Board of Liquor License. Uh, we will um, 
um, start our our next hearing is at 1.30, and that's the Mayor's Office of Employment Development. And I want to thank Nick and uh, Doug and the staff for how wonderful y'all been, not just in West Baltimore, but in East Baltimore and all over the city. Your staff is great, and they really respond to the community that your community been talking about for a long time. Again, accolades go to your whole staff, your commissioners, everybody, Tom, everybody has really changed the, uh, how the liquor board looks and the outreach that it does. So thank you very much. This has this hearing has been recessed till 1.30, which will be the mayor's office employment de development from 1.30 to 2.30. Thank you. Thank you.